Okay, hello everyone. This is uh, VGA. If everyone can hear me, this is VGA where quality is made, and we are going to be going after Spider Man and Venom Maximum Carnage. Brief little setup details uh, to go off of. Um, there will be infinites, there will be a bunch of uh, warp glitches, and there will be a lot of uh, death warps that we're going to need to do. Uh, without being, uh, any else being much said, uh, I'll be explaining more throughout the run, and I hope that all of you enjoy. Let's go ahead and uh, I will reset the console here, and we'll go ahead and hit, listen to some rock and music while I go ahead and uh, switch my source around and not play through OBS. <laughs> So, uh, of course, we're going to have a bunch of little helpers here, some superhero icons, and they'll be helping us out throughout here. So I'm going to go ahead and start this off from 10, just so uh, necessarily timing is correct. Um, so 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, time to start now. Let's begin. So right here, uh, the first thing that we're going to end up doing is we're going to have uh, a bunch of shot cancels, if you will. Um, so every hit uh, you can cancel by pressing down and up. This will allow you to pretty much continue your combo infinitely. There's an infinite hit stun uh, that you can essentially manipulate throughout this entire game. Every enemy can be hit by this, and it uh, makes this game much easier, if you will. Okay, so far it's pretty solid. Of course, we're only uh, just like any beat em up, we're kind of forced to stick around until we see that dramatic go. Webs are effective for necessarily canceling your combo as well. I'm really grateful for that as uh, this became kind of a staple in a lot of Spider Man games. all going to be about routing now, just making sure every enemy is taken care of. Alright, so we're already heading up to the first dual bosses. The first dual bosses uh, can actually be completed in one blow, so long as you necessarily do not hit. Unfortunately, I didn't get him stuck, so I'm just going to wait here and wait for the right opportunity. Alright, there we go. Getting them right together will announce a double smash. Once a double smash is implemented, it's auto KO and it will grant you one life. Now we're going to do the climb. This is sort of kind of a bonus level, if you will, because uh, they have a secret room here, but otherwise it's not really important. You're just climbing up the roof. What is important to making this a little bit less of a slog is uh, you are able to cancel your animation using that little web shot and uh, essentially climb a little bit faster. All right, so here's the first uh, the first out of all of it. We're going to have to uh, off ourselves uh, over here until we are at one life. This is important for the next stage. And the stage is coming out rather. And then we're going to take this water tower, we're going to throw it at Doppel, and jump off the roof at the same time. This will force the scene transition to the next stage. We call that the Noble Glitch. Mind you, otherwise we would have had to wait for a Shriek to toss us off. Just got to be a little bit quick about it. Otherwise, uh, the letterboxing will actually stop you from jumping off. Okay. Let's go here. 
here. Some more enemies to come after. What I really liked about this game is uh, necessarily the grab supers. You know, being able to grab super is incredibly useful, uh, and neutral super so that you can hit multiple enemies at the same time. I'm gonna have to be very careful here. This part of the stage is very risky, as uh, dying here will constitute me using a continue. I don't want that. No runner luck today, please. Go. So I am going to get that safety heart, but uh, the rule here is that we actually want to keep our health as low as possible. Reason why is because in order to transition out of the stage, you actually have to lose as much health as possible to essentially get into a near dying state that forces you to the next level. So right here is where I'm going to end up doing B and Y option, and that forces a little bit of health off of you, no big deal. Okay, that, power hit, okay, next, there we go. Ah, oh, I missed it. Tried to be a little strategic there. And so now that I'm at the stage, here we'll have Dagger save me, and it will transition me with Cloak. Now we reach the hall, and in the hall we'll have to deal with two bosses. We have Shriek and Doppelganger together. Uh, the goal will be to take out Doppelganger as soon as possible, uh, as he has a lot of invincibility frames. Okay, getting him up in this little scaffold here is extremely useful. So now that he's near dying state, he's gonna leave. And now she's gonna leave. We're gonna attach ourselves just to a specific part so that Carnage doesn't wave around too long and can kill us. Okay, so this is the first character selection screen to where we can use Venom, but going to San Francisco is gonna take way too long. So instead, we're going to do Chase. We chase Demo Goblin, but unfortunately now we're putting ourselves at 1 HP for falling. At Times Square, there's a secret superhero icon. It's the cloak icon, and we're going to grab that. Of course, we're going to jump and get ourselves killed. Why? Well, using a continue actually reloads all superhero icons on stage while granting you to keep the superhero icons you have. This means that necessarily I can get a second cloak icon. And so that's our intentional death that we're going to be doing this run. Okay. Fortunately, he was a little bit temperamental there, no big deal. So the next effect now we're going to go ahead and choose Spider-Man again. This is where things are going to get spicy with warps. The way warps work is essentially um, superhero icons have different effects with the character that you choose. They also have different stats to measure. Um, this means that a certain superhero icon can be an insta-kill against enemies, uh, let's say for Spidey, while they won't be for Venom. This also applies to uh, a lot of uh, bosses. But mind you, there is an unforeseen effect that seems to happen with Spidey. The effect of Cloak allows you to go one zone uh, further. In other words, uh, I kill all enemies on stage, but then allow myself to go one zone out. So in this case, if I use Cloak right here and am at the edge of the stage, Cloak is going to warp me to the next zone. 
but there's a glitch that happens. If all enemies are a little bit off stage and I do this at the last zone, it will force me into the next zone, but there is no next zone. So it automatically clears the stage. This is incredibly useful as necessarily Cloak will be my lifeline to getting through uh, a lot of stages. The great part about it being that I could skip bosses now. Whoop. They're gonna get a little bit rough here. So there's a cloak icon, really useful right now. These four will be a lifeline to uh, the next stages. I wanna kinda get my power head up here. And I am gonna be using a cloak. But what I wanna do is I wanna power hit, and then I wanna go for it. Ah, I missed it. Taking an enemy out of a zone will actually also uh, be an auto KO. Uh, so if I push him just enough out, I could have taken out Doppelganger with one uh, cloak hit. Fortunately, now I have to deal with him a little bit manually. Okay. This calls for a little emergency. time lost there it's okay um, we're gonna go ahead and now get into the Fantastic Four HQ uh, so in the story of course in Maximum Carnage they're looking for uh, Reed Richards sonic gun to hopefully do some impending damage on Carnage but of course now we're gonna deal some Mega Man type enemies out of nowhere and uh, we'll be doing that because the FF is out of town. These guys are notoriously difficult and will zap your life away unless you have them on one side. And the infinite of course helps with that. It's all about managing your groupings at this point. All right, so we're gonna go over here. It's done right there. Okay, so this is the final part of the scene. There's gonna be up to four that show up, and as you can see, I got hit there, so I, I lost a lot of health to measure. That was very scary. Oh, oh, I gotta get them all together. Done. So next is going to be a very uh, invaluable trick that I actually uh, developed myself. Um, this is the muzzoid combo. Uh, a power hit automatically kills the muzzoid. That little kind of twirl hit that auto kills. That being said, uh, the muzzoid boss is not exactly easy to fight. He kind of flinches you all over the place. If you can get this specific combo down. You don't have to worry about that. That combo's really tight, so I'm really happy I got that one down. Okay. So now we're on rooftop two. This is where things get a little bit dicey. What we have to do is we have to eliminate Debo Goblin. Right now. But this causes me to have a death. But because of Cloak, there are no enemies on the field. I move to the next zone. This is actually a boss level. So there is no next zone. Next stage. Prospect Park. So 
this one we're gonna deal a little bit of enemies because we don't have much cloaks left so we have to utilize our last remaining cloaks here and then from there the rest will be a lot more smooth sailing Oop. Done. okay thank you I'm gonna take this rock I'm just gonna have him hit me because the rock will just topple him over Up some room. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oof. Okay. And you can see how helpful that is. Okay. So next, we're gonna go ahead and cloak right here. We want to do it specifically like near the corner so that it works into the next zone. For some reason, that zone is a little bit temperamental. And so, this is funny, but this has an unforeseen effect. It warps us to the next zone twice. Only on this one. Which will push us to the end of the stage. Now we're at Prospect Part 2. This is a boss stage. Now, in order for us to do this, we're going to have to get some secret icons. Dabble now. Dabble now, please. And now we're using Firestar. Puts them both at one HP. Okay, so now we're gonna give this a second. Because Demo's gonna come out of nowhere, as well as the villain Karyon. Okay. Carnage is also available here. But we'll be skipping that. Using Death uh I believe his name is Deathlock. Once you're done that, it'll skip over, and then now we have to play as Venom. And Venom actually gives us the opportunity to actually do the Statue of Liberty stage, which gives us a lot of powers. A lot of people thought that stage didn't exist and everything. But uh, it, it does. You, you can unlock it. It's during the scene transition. We won't be doing that today. We're about speed. Okay, so after all the scene transitions, this will put us in Manhattan Street 2. There's a couple enemies here that necessarily need to be taken care of, but as you can see, I've been saving a lot of superhero icons. So if I hit one person right there with that uh, dumpster, four enemies will spawn instead of the normal three. This is good, because I can just black cat. What's really important to this is that uh, once you get through and part of the scene transitions, they give you a hint letting you know that Dagger is actually the weakness of Carnage. And so there is a Dagger icon, very nicely knitted right there. And now we're gonna change to the Sonic Gun icon, which is held by Spider-Man at this point. Auto KO, auto KO, run over here, run back, throw it out, Auto KO, done. And then we'll run to the middle and we'll use Dagger. And that's over. And so now that that's done, it's gonna say that it's the end. It is not the end, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to trick you all, but uh, fortunately that's not how the case goes. Um, we are gonna be doing a 1v2. So we'll be able to play as both Spidey and Venom, and now it's going to be about combo cancels and making sure that uh, he stays put. Carnage is the fastest enemy in the game, and mind you, he can actually get out of your hit stun. It's a little bit scary, but I developed a uh, technique called Carnage Loop, and hopefully we'll be able to implement that here. Well, he didn't want to go for it. All right. Just dash out, dash in, whoop. Done. So now, that's it. And so this will be the last stage, so time is coming very soon.
Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. We're at the next stage. Oh. Okay. I don't know. What was that? That was an unforeseen type of error. Okay. My monitor went blank for a second. Let's get Carnage Loops out of the way. So here's a Carnage Loop. Ugh. Oh no! I got it for two loops, but I need to get him for the third. The third loop would have auto killed me. Oh man! So he's extremely fast during this. This is something that requires a bunch of luck. Uh, the world record is clocked in at about 16 minutes and 51 seconds. Yes, and that is held by me and time. So that is the end of our run. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Avengers are brought on the Quinjet. You're taking him in a stasis container. And this is where uh, Spider Man and Venom Separation Anxiety picks up the pace. Unfortunately, that one, uh, we have a difference in opinion on that one. But that being said, uh, this game is great. It's uh, something that I would recommend to everybody. And, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, I think the only crux of it is that it's one player and not two. But uh, playing this with a friend would be amazing. I think it's an amazing experience altogether. And it did develop a lot of the combo systems that even the newest, newer Spider-Mans use today, which is very interesting to note. Um, other than that, uh, some monsters stay locked up forever, and their ghosts can't haunt you unless you let them. At least we hope. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank everybody uh, for you know, uh, everybody that was uh, doing my fun and just uh, let them know I appreciate for letting them have me on. Uh, and uh, we did great.